Matthew chapter 13 quickly you remember verse 24 and then 25 another parable thank you father <sighs> another parable he put forth to them saying this is what Jesus said. Please read. Please read. The kingdom. Yes. <laughs> okay. But the kingdom of God is what? Like what? Verse 24. Is like a man who sowed good seed in this field. Verse 25. But, save me, but. Now, the Lord is doing a work in his kingdom, but someone wants to come and oppose. But while men sleep, His enemy, the enemy of the king. Who is the enemy? The way the enemy himself is Satan. Came and sowed tars, bad seed among the wheat and went his way. The sowing is to destroy the good. But this happens while men slept. Tell your neighbor, wake up. That's my exhortation. Tonight, wake up. While men slept, while men did what? Slept. The enemy was operating. What is my exhortation? Word of encouragement. What is my preaching? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Many of us Christians are sleeping too much. We are not vigilant. We are not watching. He said, watch and pray. So that you may not do what? <laughs> I'll come back on that. Sister, keep me here. I'll come back on that. So that you may not fall into temptation. Do you see temptation? Who bring temptation? The enemy. The reason people fall into temptation, in the traps of the enemy, they destroy their lives because they are doing what? Sleeping. Some people are praying, but they are sleeping. But I say, watch and pray, because you can be sleeping and praying. Wake up. We come to church, we believe God, but many of us, we are doing what? Spiritually in great sleep and slumber. When we are not awake, we give the adversary a platform to operate without resistance. Man slept. He came, he did his work. Nobody opposed him, nobody stopped him. It was free. And this the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, the enemy comes to operate against children of God. Why he came while people are sleeping? Because you know, it will not work if they are awake. He knew if they are awake, it will not work. While men slept. Turn to your all your neighbor and say, please wake up. The 
other one, please wake up. All your neighbor, tell them, please wake up. Please, please wake up. Listen what God says. I, I hope you, you listen. I don't come much giving exhortation. But today I'm giving an exhortation. <laughs> the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Let's start reading from verse 8. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. When I'm reading, read with me. Walk as children of Let's go. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Let's continue. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Verse 11. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of what? But rather, do you notice when people sleep generally is in the darkness and the enemy operates there? Verse 12. For it is shameful to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. In darkness, let's continue. But all things are exposed, made manifest by the light. For whatever makes... Uh-huh. Therefore. Did, did you see again the word therefore? You remember therefore? Uh -huh, that's my grammar today. Therefore, do what? Awake. You who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you. Now, this is a quote from Isaiah, but leave it there. Awake you who sleep. In other words, in the church, people sleep. Probably I should say, in the kingdom of God, we have more people sleeping than the kingdom of darkness. Because they take advantage of darkness. They know darkness is for their advantage. But, brothers and sisters, if you want to win during the day, win during the night. I, I know I've, say, I, I've said a lot there. You cannot come during the day and win if you do not win during the night. You cannot win publicly people to see, and see God if you did not win where? In a secret. When you are sleeping, you are compared to dead people. Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. People who are spiritually alive, they don't sleep anyhow. Even if you don't take it as a spiritual message, literally, physically, Great men, strong people work in the night. <laughs> I worked all night, early in the morning. I wake up. I came to church on Sunday. Is when people now are coming up from sleep, then me I go and sleep. Because I know the child children of the darkness also. They are afraid if they don't want to be caught. They are running away. And that time I sleep, I wake up. There are a lot of things we have to understand. Don't joke with your light. What did I say? No, no, don't joke with night. Be alert. Don't be a sleeper. Awake. If you are sleeping, well, say, arise from what? The dead. If you are not vigilant, sleeping, when the enemy is operating, you are compared to the dead. Say, so I'll tell you something. There are people with great Potentials. Strong gift. The only problem they have, they sleep a long time. 
Joel chapter 3, I know you did not understand verse 9. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim this among the nations. Let's read. One, two, three, go. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Pause. They are mighty men, but they are sleeping. What is the use of a mighty man if he's sleeping? Lift your right hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to control my sleeping. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Prepare for this world we are living is not a playground. It's a battle, battleground. Only serious minded people they will win. Is either you are serious with God or you must go and be serious with the devil. If you're a common person, a neutral, you don't win, you don't achieve much here. See, you can be the best fighter, but if you are sleeping, you have lost. Wake up the mighty man. Say for me, mighty man. They are mighty, but they are doing what? Sleeping. And that's where their trouble is. Please observe this with me. Observe this. Do you remember Apostle Peter? Mighty man. Have you noticed that the problem of Peter was too much sleeping? When Jesus met him, he said, we have toiled all night, Luke chapter 5. We have told all night. In other words, when he was in the world before coming to follow Christ, he used to wake hard in the night. See, we have told all night. Now he come to Jesus. He's sleeping, spending his night sleeping. I'll give you an example. And you can see he's a mighty man with great potential. The devil to have him, he wants him to sleep. I mentioned Matthew chapter 26 here. I said, watch and pray. Why Jesus told him watch and pray? Jesus takes his disciples in Matthew 26 to a place called Gethsemane. When they arrive at Gethsemane, he leaves the nine there. He takes Peter by name. Peter. Matthew 26. Go down to verse, after verse 40. Yes. He takes Peter by name and, Moses, and the two sons of Zebede. <laughs> he collect them. He take them a little bit closer to the place where he was praying, where other apostles were not. Okay. Verse 37. He took with him Peter and those two sons, the two sons of Zebede, and began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. You know, there are the others were only seeing the glory of Jesus. But because these will be great leaders in church, the pillars, the three pillars, Jesus did not just want them to see his glory. He wanted them also to see when he's in pain, when he's distressed, when he's crying. Many of our leaders do not survive in times of battles because all they've seen from us is the glory on the mountain of transfiguration. You remember Peter was there, James and John on the mountain of transfiguration, but he said, they saw how he was glorified before Moses and Elijah. But Jesus said, no, 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 I don't want just you to have the image of glory. You must also have the image of my pain and my distress. If you will survive with me after you have seen my pain, my distress, I tell you, my pain, I remove my shirt, you see my scars, and you are still there, then you are good. 
You see, many of us preachers and the ministers of God, we only show people our victories. Generally, we don't tell people our pain. Anointing is costly. Anointing is not cheap. It's costly. It's costly. There are things will, God will take you through. You have scars. You have pain. You, 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 you have thorns in your flesh. You pray God does not answer your prayer because he wants you to go through something. To learn something for you to maintain the anointing. But what we show young people is what? They only see the glorious part. Wow. Oh, God is doing great things. If you want to become a really man of God, you want to understand how we survive all these years constantly preaching the same message of holiness and righteousness. It's not the glory part we should show you. We should show you what? The pain. The pain. The distress. Because you know, it's not everybody who survived that part. Because when you see that, the pain, the distress, Jesus is praying on the mountain there at the garden of Gethsemane. His sweat become blood. Remember, he, he gave them, say, you know, they come, same day they came from the table of the Lord, say, this is my blood. But they did not know how the blood comes from him. He took he, them to a place where they literally see how blood is coming out of him. That the kind of blood he told them, you must drink it. You understand why many people run away from it. When people cannot survive to see distress, pain, and sorrows, they are not ready for the glory. Oh. Am I saying something strange? You don't say amen anymore? Ah. <laughs> no, maybe one day I should come here and have a service where I tell you about, talk to you about pain and suffering. Then you will see that people should not just say, you know, lay hands on me. Because when I lay hands on you to impart the glorious anointing, it's not just the spirit of glory, the anointing that comes. You will carry some of my pain. Yes. How, this is why people, we impart power and anointing, they cannot maintain it. Because as soon as a small problem comes and shakes them, they are confused. Jesus take them. He, he said, okay, the other nine, they, they cannot. You have taken you to the mountain before. You have seen my glory. Then you can survive this one. <laughs> Listen to this. He takes them there. He began to be sorrowful. Let, let's read a little bit. I told you about verse 40. We'll go there. Then he said to them, this is the king of kings, the one who rose Lazarus, the one who did all kinds of miracles. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. The kind of sorrow I'm having, the kind of pain I'm having. He said, stay here and watch with me. I'm in pain. I'm going through things. Stay here. Don't run away. My exhortation is good. Eh? My exhortation is very, very good. And you don't say amen anymore. He said what? Stay here and do what? Watch. Don't sleep. If you are sleeping, you will not see what, what I'm going through. Next verse. He went a little further. Bless you. And fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. This prayer is not a very exciting prayer. Next one. Then he came back. This is the verse I was saying, I wanted you to come. Then he came to the disciples and found them do not. 
the disciples, 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 he found them doing what? But he found the disciples sleeping. He did not address the disciples. He addressed one man. His name is Peter. He said, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Everybody, they can sleep, but not you. When I leave here, you'll be the leader of these people. Let other people sleep. Let other people, but not you. Even for one hour, you did not watch. You, Peter. Everybody was sleeping. What do you think is going to rebuke Peter? He was a mighty man who is sleeping. How many of you have great potential but you are sleeping? You, talk, you don't take your life seriously. Your Christianity you think is a game. I only go on Wednesday on Sunday. I just do this. No, no, no. Christianity we are talking about. Where we want to take you. It's not a play. There are glorious things God put in you. For them to manifest. You must be awakened. You must watch and pray. Don't sleep. Pray. Peter, don't you know that you have the keys of the kingdom? Peter, don't you know that Satan is not looking for everybody? Satan is claiming you. He wants to sift you. Satan knows how much you carry. Satan can sense your potential. He can feel who you'll become in the future. He wants to destroy you. But if you sleep, he will take advantage. Because while men slept, the enemy came and operated and hindered. While men slept. Do you believe in your own future? Do you believe where you are going? Be careful, you see. Pray. Watch and pray. Don't sleep. See Peter. See Peter. What was his problem? Sleeping. Continue. He said, watch and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. If you pray and watch, you refuse to sleep, you pray. Peter, Satan will come with temptation. Temptation will not work. Satan will come with attacks. It will not work. The reason they come and feed you in the dream is because spiritually you are not alert. The devil attacked me. He did this to me. He did that to me. He did that to me. It's because you are sleeping. You are not vigilant. Both physically and spiritually, you don't take your spiritual life serious. Am I helping someone? You are a mighty man, a mighty woman. What is stopping you from manifesting your greatness, your mightiness, your potential in sleeping? You are relaxing too much. You want too much comfort. Tell your neighbor, awake. Look, St. Peter, Luke chapter 9. Hmm. Is it the story of Matthew chapter 17, you find it in Luke chapter 9. From verse 28. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ. <sighs> now it came to pass about 8 days after these sayings. Jesus did what? Jesus took who? I was asking a question. He took who? He took Peter, John and James. Peter, the first one. He went up on the mountain to pray. And notice, Bible does not talk to us Peter sleeping other times. He's sleeping when it comes to prayer. Oh my God. Ah, I wish you understand this. Peter is sleeping when it comes to what? To prayer. Other things are awake. When he was doing his work as a fisherman, he, can, he, can, he could work all night. 
But when it comes to spiritual matters, sleep it. This is how. Listen to me. Can I tell you? Life is spiritual. Whatever you see in the natural must happen first in the supernatural. If you don't win in prayer, you cannot win like this in the natural. Don't joke with your prayer. This Wednesday, I'm supposed to talk to you like this on a Sunday night to make you pray. If you notice as you are turning into February, my insistence is prayer. The first of February, 2012, I'm on my knees at the redemption camp praying in front of the altar where Baba the boy preaches. While praying there, there are visions I saw. One vision about this building which came to pass. The other thing I know when this place is built, one thing I must make sure is in place in each one life here is to awaken to prayer. And that was told 11 years ago. Now we have to make sure that believers, brothers and sisters in this church, we pray. Not sleep. Pray. I, I'm praying God give me grace. Let's finish the, the things here. So that when we pray, it will not disturb our neighbors. Because we have to pray. There are greatness, potential, great things that should manifest. You cannot manifest them relaxing. We should start coming here. You come in the morning. <laughs> we stay here the whole day. We are doing one thing. Praying. Evening come. We are praying. Night comes. We are praying. Tomorrow come. We are praying. And then you come and tell me that the project you had is not working. You come and tell me, no, hey, no, they, they, they are pushing my throat. When I sleep, they come and want to choke me. How did they find a way to come and choke you? It took them to the mountain to pray. Let's continue now. Hallelujah. As he prayed, now he took Peter, John, for them to pray. But you notice who is praying. One person is praying. Jesus is praying. The appearance of his face was altered. His robe became white. The, those who are not praying, they are not transformed. The one who is praying is glorified. There is a glory that must manifest in your life. It is waiting for you to arise, wake up and begin to pray. Continue. And behold, two men talk with him who were Moses and Elijah. People appeared. Now revelations begin to place. Wait, in prayer. You are a child of God. You don't know your left from your right. What is happening? God cannot talk to you. Why? Because you don't pray. Oh, if you see, but apostle, I pray. Which means your prayer has not yet reached the level that is required. Who appear in glory, in glory, and spoke of a disease which was about to, <laughs> about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Yes. But Peter, say me, Peter. Do you notice? But Peter and those with him. Do you notice the other side? Jesus, disciples are sleeping. Peter names is mentioned. Here, people are sleeping. But John was there, James was there, but the name of one person is mentioned Peter. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep. Please wake up. In the name of Jesus, please wake up. Peter was heavy, heavy with sleep. Now, and when they were fully awake, there, there was a spiritual meeting going on. They were invited to the meeting. They are sleeping. Spiritual things are happening. 
is there physically but sleeping? Peter, why were you invited here? The other nine apostles are left there. The reason you came here is not to sleep here, but to participate in the meeting. Now, he wake up when he's fully awake. What scripture says? No, next verse. Then it happened, as they were parting from him, Peter said, Master, it is good. He started talking nonsense. Out of, uh, 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 Moses was here. All the discussions, he did not know because he was sleeping. He woke up, hey, Moses is here. Now, by the time he is awake, people are going. The meeting is finished. He was in the meeting physically. But absent because of what? Sleeping. If sleeping or comfort or food or anything that makes your life so, it stops you from praying. That thing is an enemy. You did not say amen. Satan knows this. That's why he makes you so comfortable. so hot. Sleep. <laughs> he said, Master, it's good for us to be here. It's good. Meeting finished. What's the good of being here? And let us make three tabernacles. One for, Mo for you Mo and Moses and Elijah. The Bible said, not knowing what he said. Full of sleep. You, you will pray nonsense. Trouble comes, you will not know what to say to change the situation because you have been sleeping. Next verse. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. Because he was talking nonsense, the heaven had to come and stop him. So you are talking nonsense. And the voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Forget about Moses, forget about Elijah. Forget about apostle, forget about prophet. This is Jesus, is my beloved son. Can I hear amen? amen? The great Peter, always sleeping, Acts chapter 12. The Bible says James was arrested by Herod from verse 1. Now, about this time, King Herod stretched out his hand and to arrest the church. To arrest him from the church, verse 2. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. You remember James? He used to be on the mountain with Peter all the time. The brother of John, he was killed. And because Herod saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. When the enemy succeeded in a small thing, he increased the attacks against you. Oh, you did not know that. Eh? You know, the way to stop him is to defeat him. When he tries to attack you, he realizes that it will cost him. It's better to avoid you. You did not hear my English. Let me repeat. If you don't arise spiritual to defeat the enemy in spiritual battles, in a way that he's convinced that, I don't try here, he will continue to try more and more. The reason you keep having attack after attack is because when they attack you first, you did nothing. You cried. Hey, I will go to church. Apostle will lay hand on me. I will go to the prayer line. What did you do that make the enemy to think twice before I attack you? This Christianity of babies. They will lay hands on me. Okay, we'll lay hand, we'll help you. But when you go there, nobody is in your bedroom to lay hands on you. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread, the days of Passover. Continue. So now, when he had arrested Peter, him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squad of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. The same way they brought Jesus for people to shout, crucify him. Next. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but 
constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Stop. When James was arrested, the church did not pray because the church was also sleeping. The church was also sleeping. When we don't arise to pray, the enemy will start killing people. But when we stand in prayer, no, no. No, no. Now, this time, Peter is your pastor. He's the pastor in the church. <laughs> One of his assistant pastor collected. And then the church realized, hey, 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 hey. Then they start praying for their senior pastors. Hey, this man, Herod, will, do, will, will be a a pastorless is like that. <laughs> the enemy knows you strike the shepherd, you scatter the sheep. Thank God for those who pray for their pastor. God bless you. What saved Peter? It was not himself. It was the prayer of the church. Can you believe us? Stand and pray for your pastor. Listen to this. When Herod was about to bring him out to, to, to go and execute him, that night Peter was sleeping. Don't, don't you see there's a problem? The, the next day they will take him to go and execute him, but he's sleeping. Eh? Peter is always doing what? was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers. The guards before the door were keeping the prison. He's sleeping. What happened? Now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, yet he's still sleeping. A light shone in the prison. He's still sleeping. When some light comes, you wake up. You say, why, why is it so bright? And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up. For angel to slap you for you to wake up. <laughs> he hit him on the side. Boom! <laughs> he said, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hand. If the church did not dead. What has kept some of you alive is because some people have been praying for you. But you cannot realize fulfill your destiny with prayerlessness. Relaxing, sleeping, slumbering, it will not help you. Lift your right hand and say, Father, forgive me for oversleeping. Help me to awaken to prayer. Stand on your feet.